This is hydrogen tap. What you're looking at here is the Aaron cell that is three inches by eight inches. There are 16 plates in it. This is a cell that I had some problem with the last time producing hydrogen. As you can see, I've overcome that by adding more lye. Adding more lye did not bring the amperage up. It actually didn't do anything in that area. What I am able to do is bring down the amperage. You can see how much hydrogen. This is the wider tube I'm going to be using with the Honda for tomorrow only. This will produce enough hydrogen, I believe, to run it. If the weather prevails tomorrow, I'll start my testing with it. Before I do that, I hope to have another gas test that shows how much gas it is being produced. Right now, I'm waiting for the seal on the top to be set up. I had to make a new seal on the bottom because I was having problems with leak on this. And I also had problems with the seal on the top. So I'll be sealing it with a gasket sealer. That's a liquid sealer along with the regular seal. This unit will have hydrogen in and a water input for it. I've had a couple of questions on me being, they don't use the word scatterbrain, but I think that's what they mean about not going in one direction. This is the way I work. I do a lot of tests all together, and then I choose the system that works, and I go towards that direction. Sorry if you don't like it. That's how I do it. Here's another cell that I've been working on on the side, and this is a flat cell. The same plate system is in it. It's 16 plates. There'll be two sets of 16. They're 3 inches by 8. This is a flat unit. Like I told you, I'm working on a couple of things all at the same time. But tomorrow, I'll be testing the tall unit out with the Honda. It won't go in the engine compartment, obviously, but I'll be setting it up beside the car. I'm not interested in the installation. Right now, I'm installation in, in, interested totally in just seeing the car idle with the hydrogen input. The other question was, Am I going to separate the hydrogen and oxygen? And at this point, I'm not going to do that. My biggest concern now is flashback. Although last year, I ran the car on a cell as a secondary system, meaning with the gasoline. And I didn't have any flashback at all. The only time I had a problem was when I forgot to turn the cell off, left the car, came back, turned the car on, and I had a ignition in the air filter compartment because the hydrogen had filled it up. A lot of people questioning whether or not you can run a car on this hydrogen on demand because they don't think you can get enough hydrogen out. The answer is simply that you're getting more hydrogen out, more energy out of the hydrogen cell than it requires to generate it. And that's simply because when you put hydrogen and oxygen together and burn it, you get more energy. In fact, I'm betting on that. We're not changing the law of energy. 
you can see this cell here. Again, this is going to have two sets of 16. When it's through, it'll be pretty compact. This is, again, another system I'm working on. At the same time, I'm working on the system you saw. I'm working on five systems at the same time. Picture it as you're looking at a three-dimensional idea scheme from a two-dimensional point of view. You only see parts, and you think that I'm doing things scatterbraining. But if you saw the whole picture, if you saw all of them together, you would see that there's a connection between everything I do. You're only seeing different parts of that elephant. hope I explained that. These are some more tubes that I've been working with. In fact, there's over five systems I'm doing at the same time. It would be impossible to show everything. In fact, it's pretty hard to video while you're doing your tests. It does slow you down considerably. For those of you interested in buying or, or seeing what I have, it's hydrogentap.com. You'll see everything I'm doing. It's hydrogentap.com. That's 12 inches long, another cell I'm experimenting with. Quarter inch gap, 